quick hit, a little taste of West Virginia. Great campsite, great views. Make a little home for tonight. I did take a little bit of a risk. I hope that's not a gamble that I shouldn't have taken. A little confusing, but I'm figuring out where this trail goes, which I think, hmm. everybody, Syntax77 here, and let me tell you what the current situation is. I am at a trailhead here. I am in West Virginia. I'm actually just over the line from Virginia in what I would call Northeastern West Virginia, and I'm in the George Washington National Forest. I'm about to do a loop hike. We're going to do the Half Moon Mountain Loop Hike. Two days, one night, roughly 10-ish, let's call it 11 miles. And near the summit, there is some camping from what I've read online at right around the halfway point. Right now it is the end of March. It's actually a few days into spring. According to my dash, it's uh, mid 40 degrees right now. Potentially, it could go up to the 60 degree mark. We'll see, depending on our elevation up here, which shouldn't be too high. Uh, I think we have you know, maybe a, a thousand or two uh, feet of elevation gain to get up on the ridge here and find some camp. Yesterday was a little different. I actually came down with some flexibility. I'm off for three days and yesterday was totally different here. Matter of fact, there was snow everywhere. I only see some remnants now, but there was snow, 30 mile per hour gusts. Nolly and I actually came and checked the trailhead out yesterday and uh, it just wasn't that great. So we went and actually hung out near Strasburg, Virginia and did some battlefield day hikes, stuff like that. Hit a hotel, came back right now, fresh and rested. So I got my pack next to me. Ugh right here just out of frame in the passenger seat. I'm gonna put that on. It's not the lightest load in the world. Nolly has his own pack as well, but I do have a lot of uh, extra stuff for him in there. I got a brand new tent that I'm looking forward to trying out, the Dominion 1P from Outdoor Vitals. And um, the two of us are just gonna curl up in that. So kind of switch things up. I do have a new hammock system uh, and a little hammock tent for him. Uh, that I'm going to use in the future, but I originally didn't realize he was coming with me and Then my wife went to New Orleans with a friend and it was just me and the dog sitting at the house So down here we came and uh, I was already planning on using that tent and figured hey bring the dog along and hit the trail We're at the bucktail trailhead right now and I will be posting GPS data and recording that as I go along, waypoints, etc. So if you want to play the home game, um, I'll put a link in the video description or hit my website. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. So here we go. Are you aware of this? You remember this? He's got his food and his water in here for the most part, um, some bowls for food and water as well, stuff like that. So he's gonna carry a bit of his own weight. And I got a fancy new leash from viewer M in New Mexico, she sent me this. So I'll keep him close by on the leash, um, definitely to start. I don't want him uh, <laughs> running up on any uh, horses or day hikers, uh, cause that is kind of popular around here. All right, buddy, you ready to go? There we go, Bucktail Trail. Here we go. So it looks like it splits right here. That way or that way, obviously. We're gonna be doing a clockwise loop. Loop, loop, loop. Uh, mileage wise, because the uh, summit that we're gonna hike near, or I should say camp near, is pretty much dead in the middle of the loop. But elevation wise, I think that uh, what we're doing is basically going to get rid of a lot of elevation pretty quick. And then tomorrow should be pretty smooth downhill. That's the idea at least. So here we go. I'll tell you what though. I think we made the right choice Denali. <laughs> As you mark your territory. Uh, this weather is great. 68 degrees, good lord. Now that might be a little off from sitting in the uh, climate controlled Jeep. 
but it's definitely in the 60s right now. Yesterday was totally different. I would have been up for that. I like a little snow, I like a little challenge, but I'm trying to gradually introduce this little guy into the colder camping. He is a pit bull with minimal fur. <laughs> I got a little jacket for him and everything. Um, and he lives in a house, so he's not that accustomed to cold temps and high winds and all that stuff. So, I'm breaking him in gently, but this is perfect. And then tonight it should cool off a little more, maybe get into the 30s, but we'll be in a nice sheltered tent by then. So as you can see right now, it's uh, like a fire rogue kind of vibe. Very mild and chill. And at some point, I imagine we'll jump off and get into more of a backpacking kind of trail, but this is a good warm up. That first mile went exceptionally quick, but heating up here, 62 degrees or so. What do you say? You take a water break. I'll get rid of this uh, layer here. Uh, just shove it on the outside here, I guess. I'll keep it handy because I have a feeling if the wind picks up, which isn't predicted, but if it does, it'll cool things off a little bit. I'm actually sweating a little bit. Don't really have a change of clothes in here. Um, I have some long johns, uh, long underwear, and long uh, like base layer top, but it's hard to imagine that I'll need that, but maybe tonight. So let's get you some water. Well, a mile and a half later, it's still pretty much on this forest road, but it is degrading a bit right around here it's starting to uh, look a little less hospitable for a vehicle but so far that's what it's been and uh, it's getting a little wetter as we go too huh Nolly let's see here now I did wear my uh, these are actually my winter boots my Garmont GTX snows but because the temps are a little cooler and I found that they breathe pretty well I've used these boots in the spring before and uh, they actually are surprisingly comfortable even when it's uh, warmer temps and by warmer I mean you know up to 60 at the max but that way I don't have to worry about them uh, well getting wet they've never failed me in terms of uh, the Gore-Tex lining leaking or anything like that so that's good and we're just making our way along. So we're at 2.6 miles or so. And uh, we're just navigating this water and mud. I think maybe we'll take a little break for a snack or something like that at some point. And uh, yeah, just keep my eyes peeled for the right location. All right, I hear some running water in addition to the <laughs> puddles we've been crossing. And sure enough, there's a bridge right there. Now, from doing my research, there's a website called Hiking Upward. If you're on the East Coast, particularly uh, Mid-Atlantic, awesome site. And they had an article on this, like they do just about anything in this area. And uh, some pretty detailed notes. So, that bridge right there, the buck trail continues on. We're not gonna take that. We're gonna stay to the right and go up this way. And the trail should cross the water five times in the next hmm, roughly 0.8 miles according to the site. And uh, I'm gonna make sure to grab some water. That's gonna be my last chance for water at that fifth crossing before we get to the summit. When we get to the summit, we're gonna check out the views and then it kind of dips down and there's a saddle, a little 
depression and the elevation. That's where we should be able to find camp. So what I'm gonna do is uh, at some point, maybe stop and make some noodles for that break that I've been dreaming about and fill up water. Watch out for the horse poop there, Nolly. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm gonna fill up water. I, uh, for this trip, I've been using a stair pen and I thought about bringing one on this trip, but because of the temps and whatnot, it looks like freezing temperatures won't be an issue. Yesterday, if I had gone, probably would have been. Today and tomorrow, not so much. So what I brought was, I have a Sawyer Micro, similar to a Sawyer Squeeze, and then there's the Sawyer Mini, a little bit smaller, and then the Micro, which is the smallest of their water filters. Speaking of water, look at this beautiful stream right here. So at some point on the fourth or fifth crossing, I'm gonna dip in and grab that. I brought a gravity setup. Reason being, when we hit that water, it'll be around three-ish miles in and we'll have two more to go. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not gonna be super fun but I'm gonna grab a gallon. I have a one gallon Sawyer bag for my gravity system. And that should be good for Nolly and I to get through the night. Um, on me, I got a 16 ounce bottle right here. Nolly has one in his pack as well. And then right back, uh, what side? Right back there, I got a liter and a half that I'm working my way through. Probably got a liter left with me right now and Nolly has a little bit of his. But we'll grab a gallon, which is like 10 pounds. But we'll take that, come on, this way buddy. Go ahead, hop over. There you go. We'll, um, we'll grab that 10 pounds of water and reluctantly uh, pack it into camp. But then we'll be good Whoop. as I navigate here around this fallen tree. Uh, ramen noodles for lunch, but other than that, I didn't bring regular backpacking food. I have some canned goods, some chili. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I am going to make some mac and cheese, so I'll probably need uh, about three quarters of a liter for that. But I won't have to use as much water as normal. That'll leave us some good drinking water. Good job, buddy. Um, as we go, but right now I'm going to concentrate. I'm figuring out where this trail goes, which I think, hmm. All right, a little confusing, but luckily I read that in advance. This is kind of worn, so I think I'm kind of headed along the edge here. And uh, it says follow it upstream. So that's definitely what we're doing right now if I don't fall in. There you go, don't go too fast. Good job. Doesn't really feel right, but <laughs> I think we're uh, I think we're doing what we're supposed to. We just look for some footprints around here somewhere. Come up here. There you go. Oh, there we go. That looks like a trail right in there. It was a little confusing, but we did it. All right. Yep, that's the trail. We'll just keep on keeping on. Some nice rock features over there. And as you can see, it kind of slowly transitioned, but ever since we got to that bridge, we're finally on what feels like more of a backcountry trail instead of a old road. Which personally, I usually kind of enjoy more. Something about walking on forest roads, fire roads and whatnot. It's fine, but makes the time pass a little slower for whatever reason. Probably because I'm fantasizing about <laughs> driving on it and uh, whatnot. But trail's a little tighter now, feels more like a backcountry trail couple more crossings and uh, we'll grab some water. Come on. Good boy. It's 
been roughly, feels like a mile-ish. We're coming up on another, uh, it's like a little road junction here. So, I'm looking at the uh, map. And there's a clearing over there. It looks like the trail turns right. Yep. And uh, I see pink blazes. Now it has been orange blazes for the buck trail, but at this point we're connecting with the German Wilson trail. They say purple on the website, but uh, looks pink to me, but close enough. Now, I did take a little bit of a risk. Uh, we are beyond the 0.8 miles that they said the trail crossed five times. Oops, sorry, Nolly. Um, I'm looking at my topo map though. The trail does, this trail does cross uh, Half Moon Run, which is that body of water we saw flowing pretty good down there. Crosses it two more times. I hope that's not a gamble that I shouldn't have taken, but it looks pretty prominent on the topo map and it's the same exact body of water that we just went through down there. It's just coming from up here. Uh, I'm going to play it safe and take the first crossing, which should be up here. And as you can see, we're back on a uh, pretty wide fire service road kind of vibe right now. I hope I wasn't wrong because we do need water tonight. But uh, we'll see. Doubting myself a little bit, but I mean, that's what the map says. So we'll see. Well, thankfully, my paranoia was unfounded. Sure enough, within like a tenth of a mile or less, I came to this crossing right here, got some fresh water, and according to my topo map, there should be one final second crossing from here uh, where I could get water, but I just wanted to cut my losses and I kind of wanted to take a break, so I'm doing it here. But for those of you who wanna play the home game, if you download my GPS data, I'll go ahead and tag my uh at least what i find to be the last water crossing before half moon mountain i think there's going to be one more but i'll go ahead and tag that but i was kind of hungry wanted to take a break so here i am nice fresh water just dipped in the stream and uh, made some ramen noodles which i have right here which is quite tasty uh, which also does bring up a, a maybe something i should address for my not my last video, but two videos ago in the Smoky Mountains, I did something similar and I got a very concerned uh, comment on the YouTube channel from someone because what I did was just what I did right now. I dipped into the stream, I brought it up to a boil with my stove right over here. Once I hit a boil, I cut the heat with a lid on and let it sit. And this particular person was quite concerned that I did not bring it to a boil and keep it at a boil for a full minute. And he pretty much thought that I was gonna die. Well, I can tell you that was a month ago and I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, this is a common thing that I used to believe as well, but if you look into it, and I'll actually go ahead and put a link in the video description below, but if you look into it, if you check out the World Health Organization, they have a whole post on it as well as if you want to look further at various medical and science papers out there go ahead and do your own research but bring it up to a boil cut the heat with a lid on and let it steep at that point you're going to render anything any pathogens that are dangerous inert and you will have consumable water you can do what you want boil it for a minute that's fine that's safe and i should point out key distinction we're talking about consumption right now if you're doing some Civil War battlefield surgery and you require sterilization, that's a whole nother ball game. But in terms of killing pathogens so that you can eat it, that's pretty much my go-to system as far as making ramen noodles out of a stream, which I often like to do. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments section below, but that's just my thoughts on that. Speaking of which, now's when I gotta do what I've been putting off for a while. And that is, I'm gonna just put a lid on that to keep it hot. I gotta stock up on water. So earlier I was talking about my Sawyer micro gravity system. Oh, Nolly, you, you dumped over your food, buddy. He's uh, not eating, by the way. He's on a high alert. 
I'm trying to convince them to eat food. But anyway, this is my uh, Sawyer Squeeze one gallon gravity system. I have some tubing in here as well. The whole system together is like eight ounces. The filter itself is over there with a smaller bag. It's only 1.75 ounces. But for eight ounces, I have that gallon bag that I'll fill up from the stream right here, reluctantly, and get a gallon of water or 10 pounds of water. And when I get to camp, I don't have a one gallon treated water bag, but I have this half gallon or 64 ounce uh, bag right here that I'll filter into so I can get two fills out of that and I have some tubing that I'll hook up to the gravity system right there so I'll show that a little bit later in more detail but yeah that's what I got to do after I eat my soup here I will fill up I haven't even really thought about how I'm gonna attach it to the backpack I really don't want to carry it in one hand although I could um, but I'll strap it on the pack somehow and pack that up to Half Moon Mountain, which should be within a mile or so, we'll be at camp. Speaking of which, it is, according to my Fitbit, three, three o'clock or so. And the nice thing is, we still have like four and a half hours until sunset. You gotta love spring. Um, I'm pretty excited about that, because in the winter, often, I would have an hour and a half right now of daylight left. But I have a ton of time to relax, enjoy my soup, fill up some water, put that pack back on, and make our way towards the summit. All right, here we go. Getting back into it. I can certainly feel the effect of this extra weight on my back, which is kind of ironic too, because the majority of this counterclockwise loop is very chill, relatively, in terms of elevation and terrain. But there's one spot where they really give it to you, and that is here on this section of the German Wilson Trail. We're gonna pick up in the next mile, 1,000 feet of elevation gain or so. Much more akin to something you might come across than say the Adirondacks or New Hampshire's White Mountains. Cool little area though pretty rocky. You can see Half Moon Run right there as we depart it. So down that little runoff there, right in there is where we had our noodle break. But we will gain elevation and leave that behind now. Actually, this is probably that last crossing right here now that I mention it. So I'm glad we got it down there. This would have been fine. But it was definitely flowing a lot nicer down there. But I'm pretty sure this right here, let me tag it. And save. Last water point. All right. So there it is. This, I believe, unless I uh, come across another one, is the end of the line for the water. I give Denali credit. <sighs> He's being patient with me. Taking breaks. <sighs> it's definitely a workout. Still got Denali uh, tethered. I haven't seen anybody since this morning. Um, when we first came in, there was those horses that left. And I'd say within the first quarter mile, I saw a couple with their pit bull. Um, Hiking out. Look like they backpacked last night. But since then, I haven't seen anybody, but I'm just keeping him on there. And it's really not a problem. He's got plenty of lead on there. And the uh, lead, so I got his regular leash here, the Outdoor Master, kind of bungee guy. And then it's connected to his leash that M from New Mexico made him which is the um, pressure collar kind of setup. 
and we train with that a little bit at home. He got used to it real quick. So as soon as he feels a little bit of tug on it, he won't pull anymore. He'll just stare at me like, like that and wonder why I'm being a wuss. But he'll wait, right buddy? Yeah. All right, we're getting there. It is 421, kind of taking our time, enjoying the sights, enjoying the sun. Temperature is still above 60, it's uh, 62.4. So I think we're about to crest out. And then, maybe, just maybe, Denali, we'll be at the summit. All right. Shake it out, Nels. Shake it out. We're almost there. Less than an eighth of a mile now. Actually getting some nice views to my left here, the other ridge line. <sighs> and it's slowly flattening out. We're getting there. I don't see <laughs> much more that we can really go up. Oh, uh, wait, okay. I'll double check my notes, but this looks like it goes around there which is how my topo map with the waypoint for the lookout is over there. It's a pretty well-worn path and I see a campsite. There's supposed to be another view and then the campsite, but let's go up here first, get a look at that, and then maybe backtrack. Woo, I think maybe we drop the pack. What do you think, Nelly? Oh yeah, let's, uh, let's take the packs off. Wanna take yours off too? Oh, I don't blame you. Whew. Spin move. Feels a little better. Whew. Yep, don't think it goes any further than this, buddy. Let's see what we can see here. There's that same ridge. Maybe over here. Man, it feels nice to have that pack off. <sighs> One more mini push. Still got some snow. Like I was saying earlier, this is how the entire parking lot was yesterday. Totally different conditions. And so windy, just in the parking lot. I've already noticed a little pickup in wind, maybe five miles per hour up here right now. And there was no wind at the bottom, but yesterday, here we go. I think maybe right over here. This might actually look down at the campsite we're going to go to. Because I dropped the pack right down over there. Uh, don't go any further than that, bud. What do you think of that view? Pretty cool? Yeah? That's nice. That's real nice. And we still got over two hours before sunsets, which for me is pretty good. <sighs> Usually push it to the limit when I was down in the Smokies a month ago or so. Definitely did some night hiking, but not this time. Wasn't trying to do that to you, but this is cool. <sighs> so we can come back up here maybe after we set up camp if I have the energy, but that is pretty nice. Right now though, head back down. A little backtrack, let's do it. And I didn't even realize the view behind me when I came up this. There's the pack down there. <laughs> Luckily we're on the same path. Over here, over here, come on. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go find camp. Oh yeah, I'll take this. Got a little grass going on. Little view, flat area for the tent, which uh, usually I do a hammock when possible, but switching it up this time. Certainly plenty of trees if you are a hammock camper. I don't think you'd have any problem in here, but I'm going to drop pack and uh, rest my legs a little bit. I think Nolly will too. Throw this tent together, make a little home for tonight. Nice 
view of the ridge over there. Got my tent. <laughs> Nolly's on it. Uh, that's my Z Light pad. I got another pad for him, but folded mine in half so he can hang out for a little bit. So my new tent for this trip is Outdoor Vitals and it's their Dominion. Now before they had the Dominion, I believe they call it the 2.5P. This is the Dominion 1P, one person tent. I got the tent spikes right here and it's all one single piece. And then this bag here, which you can tell is a little loose. And the reason for that is I did what they call fast and light, which is what I saw Dave doing when we were in Utah. Now, this is a complete system. It comes with the body of the tent, which most people are used to. It has the bug net and all that stuff, the bathtub bottom and whatnot. And then you put a fly over top. But I did not bring the body with the bug net with me because, well, right now there is no bugs out here and I like to travel fast and light. So I took their advice and I'm running it that way. So I left that at home. This brings me to two pounds and that is for the tent poles, this bag here, and the fly, as well as the footprint, which it does come with. Uh, a lot of tents you buy them and they don't come with a footprint. So that, uh, I remember the first tent I ever bought was a Kelty and I loved it but I had to spend an extra like 40 or 50 bucks on a footprint. This one comes with it. And in this case, it's actually important because it gives it some structural integrity. It's gonna hold the corners out. And then also uh, there probably is gonna be some rain this evening. So if anything runs across the ground, this will keep us dry. So the body right there. But first things first, let's go ahead and put the poles together. And they have the line in there that holds it all together and it just pops right in place. It is a tapered end design. So it's wide at the head end and narrow at the foot end. I got my footprint. I'm just gonna plug that in. And you can see I kind of get that arch going there. Grab the other side as the jet goes over top of me. Probably coming out of DC. All right, so there's that. And then I got this crossbar here and uh, that's gonna give me some little extra width once I get the fly on. It's got pull tabs on it, so I can tension it out once it's set up. All right, both sides done. Pull tab tension. See some slack in the middle there, right? But that's where that crossbar comes into play. All right, Nolly can come with me for this, I guess. Just as a side note, you can tell that he was with me in the basement when we set this up and uh, to get him used to it. And he's already ready to hang out. So rotate that, there we go. And I got some Velcro tabs there that I'll attach those to. And that'll hold that in place. And now it'll have some shape. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little more like a tent, right? But uh, we will get some tent spikes, pull out the sides, and we'll be good to go. Now I'll show you in a second, but because I'm not using the bug net, which would normally come down straight on each side there, um, I just have the fly, obviously. And so I'm gonna have a bigger footprint and this little area right here is basically a little section for Denali he gets his own little corner comes with eight aluminum tent spikes and I also brought some uh, little titanium guys to hold down Nolly's sleeping pad definitely on a hill here head end the wider end up here uh, so when I lay all the blood won't go towards my head so I'm just gonna stake it down right here I need a rock. Nolly, find me a rock. Excellent, thank you. All right. <laughs> he wants to go in there really bad. He loves this thing. Oh, hey, bud. I'm pretty sure on my first backpacking trip that we brought an actual plastic hammer. Uh, kind of laugh at that now. There we go. So let's get the door going. I get it roughly tight. 
and then I can just pull that line and really tighten it up. Uh, same with all the corners. And I'm not going to do it tonight, but if it was high winds on like some crazy summit somewhere, then I would use these extra guy lines to really rig this thing down. But just having the corners is probably plenty. There we go. Those are titanium for his pad. So yeah, I'll pull this side out. Yeah, I'll do the bottom one. This would be more of the storm one. Although you can see here, there is some mesh underneath there on the uh, rainfly. So I can use that for airflow. If I'm cold tonight, I probably won't do this. It really depends on what happens, but there is a little piece of Velcro attached to this tube here. And I can attach that and it keeps it open for airflow, which is pretty cool. So I'll leave it like that for now. And tighten it up. It's starting to look pretty good. We're good. So if it rains tonight, which I expect that it will, we will be fine. And uh, the wind will be off of us. I see you, buddy. And uh, we're good to go. Keep this vent open over here, too. There you go. Two pound tent, not bad. I mean, like I said, I usually do hammocks, usually if I can. But this is pretty slick, and I like tents, too. I'm not strictly hammock. So I'm liking this. Open this up now. Tension. So this is from Walmart. It's supposed to be antimicrobial. It's uh, 15 bucks instead of 10. Big spender over here. But they do want to roll up. And I did cut it down. It was originally like a six and a half or so foot piece. But cut it down to like three and a half feet. I'll put that right there. And then what I usually do, especially because it's a cheaper guy, punch right through it with some uh, tent spikes. And that keeps it in place. For a human, you know, maybe you'd be all right. Figure that out yourself. But this way, I know it's not going anywhere. There we go. Didn't even need a rock for that. You want your sleeping bag? And my friend Pim in the Netherlands made this. It's two separate pieces. So I can bring just one half if I want just to throw for him or something for him to lay on but it has snaps so I can <laughs> I can snap it together and this is his little sleeping bag all synthetic very easy to clean and this is what he's gonna snuggle up in tonight plus I have my hammock gear down top quilt I actually stole my wife's 20 degree model and we can kind of unbutton that and throw it over the top of both of us, really. Surprisingly, it is 6.34. I'm about ready for dinner. Although I got nothing to do tonight, so. Well, I could always have a snack later. Uh, maybe we'll get into some food. Of course, if I'm gonna talk about food, I guess I should probably think about water, too. Right, Nolly? So, all that hard work. We got the one gallon Sawyer and up here I uh, actually didn't even use it today but I had it ready to go so in here with my warm hat that I may need later I got a 32 ounce bag and the Sawyer micro but let's disconnect this I don't know why I had an accent just now but that's okay so here's my kit Let's see, I could easily just kind of drink right out of it. But right now, I'm gonna strip it down and put it in gravity mode. This will be my dirty end, the gray cap there. And I'll put links in the video description, but you can get these adapters a lot of places. When I grabbed that water earlier, 
has that big wide mouth over there. I'm not gonna mess with that. That's how I filled it, made it real easy to do. But the other end now is gonna be where I'm gonna flow from. Screw on my clean water bag. Obviously you don't wanna mix those up. All the air is out of that. So gravity is gonna take over and it's gonna start going. A uh, little tip, I've had this in the past. If you see a bunch of air bubbles in your line, that's happened to me before, and it's because the seal, there's a little gasket inside of this blue connector, and uh, I had mine pop out and disappear one time, so it was sucking in air and it was slowing the whole system down. Let's see if I can find a brace to hang this on. This isn't really super ideal because as that weight builds up, it's gonna pull on these lines and, uh, well, they could pop off and fail. In my case, I did take some wire ties and put it on there. I find that keeps it uh, a little more secure, but I'm already almost done right now. So it's pretty quick. Um, usually my intention with a gravity system is I can just walk away and not even think about it. But by the time I'm even not even done filming, showing you this, uh, it's just about done. And I'll still have another bag full, uh, half gallon bag full that I can get later. So there you go, I got a bunch of clean water. That was really quick. Raise it up so it stops flowing. That's capped up. Undo this. I always carry a bunch of caps. Not going anywhere now. And I got another half gallon ready to go. That temp is dropping though. It is, and it's down to 52. You all right, bud? You look a little tangled up. You probably need your jacket. You probably need mine too. Time for a little lumberjack. Get you nice and warm and toasty, bud. All right, so I got shelter. <laughs> I got water. I think it's time to make some dinner. Let me show you what I got food-wise. I have for tonight. <laughs> I knew that I was coming up here and there wasn't a lot of uh, water options. As we saw, I packed it all in. So. What I've learned over the years is if you got to pack in water, that's weight. The advantage of dehydrated meals is usually that you can get to a campsite with like a stream or something. And uh, well, that meal is super light and you just dip out of the stream and rehydrate it. But in my case, that wouldn't have really helped me. So I have my gallon of water, but I brought a real can of chili and this does require water, but it's a uh, Bear Creek Country Kitchens grown up mac and cheese, whatever that means. I got it at Big Lots, it was like, uh, how much was it? A dollar or something. So I'm gonna cook this in my cook pot with some water and then the chili, I'll probably pour that right over top and I'll have my own chili mac and cheese for a total cost of $2.25. sleeping bag you got your pad so phase one heat up the chili since we have a fire going I'll just sit it over here get that heating up and then I'll use my stove crank this guy up I don't have a windscreen on it but I got a full can here and I'm out of here tomorrow so 
I'm not super worried about fuel efficiency. This mac and cheese is actually pretty simple. Two and a half cups of water, and you dump it all in. Sauce, everything together. So now, the painful part. 12 to 15 minutes of simmer. Chili back there is doing pretty good. Pretty much have it in a nice position on the coals there. Man, it looks and smells good. That's our mac and cheese. I'm gonna turn the heat off on the stove. And got my chili. Woo, my God, that's hot. I'm gonna dump it over top. I know it looks like a mess. I'll save a little bit of it. Looks terrible, I know, but oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I've been waiting for this for a while. Fire's going good. Nolly had some food, he had some water, he's relaxing, it's warm. All right, let's see how this dinner is. Chili mac and beef, custom style. Let's go to the bottom, oh my God. It looks amazing. Oh man, that's amazing. I mean, cleaning this pot out compared to throwing a bag out, probably not the same, but whew, that is awesome. Probably shouldn't put it on my knee, I'll melt my pants, but that is, that is awesome. So here you go, Bear Creek, apparently. Never heard of them before. Just a uh, random brand from Big Lots, but if you ever find them, grab them and uh, throw some Hormel chili in there. Mm. Maybe it's because I put 45 minutes of work into this, but it is very satisfying. So we'll both drink some water, crawl into the tent, and uh, well, before you know it, time for day two. <sighs> good morning, everyone. And Denali, good morning. Oh, it's about seven o'clock. I think I just heard my watch beep. Had a good night. According to my thermometer over there, the low was 43. So, not too bad. Sun's starting to light things up. Had a good night's sleep in the tent here. See Nolly's in his in his bag. At, at some point he uh, <laughs> made his way into my sleeping bag because I do have the quilt set up. So he was able to snuggle right in with me. And then at some other point he uh, got back into his bag. So I think he's been comfortable, although I think he hears something out there now. He's on high alert. <laughs> you okay, buddy? But, uh, had a good night's sleep. That moon was bright last night. Uh, I think around 4, 4.30-ish, a little before 4.30, I think. Went to, uh, both of us went to do a little bathroom break. And that moon was full moon and super bright. It was actually, uh, almost looked like there was a flashlight out there. Not that I think you're going to run away on me, but... I just hooked his um, his two leashes up to Kevlar strap from Dutch Rare Gear, like a hammock hanging strap. Two of them tied together on <laughs> a whoopee hook system there. My makeshift super long dog leash. But yeah, here we are. Looking pretty nice. So probably just have a uh, cliff bar or something. Wake up. Definitely have a cup of coffee and uh, breaking down should be pretty easy. There was some rain actually right after we got back in the tent around 4.30 a.m. A little bit of rain, it never really downpoured. We were fine in the uh, Dominion tent here. It worked pretty nice. Luckily, I was smart enough to bring the top of my stool inside so it didn't get wet. My pillow last night was simply my Ultra Vitals 
Adventure synthetic jacket. I, uh, I slept, I didn't sleep with it on, I just packed it into itself and it makes for a good pillow. And then I kind of put it inside of a, a buff I had and my knit hat ski mask thingy. Nice little pillow. Oh, I guess I'll send a message to my wife here on the spot. We'll get that booted up. No cell service here at all. So I've been using this to send okay messages and where I camped and stuff like that. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna get up. Come on over, son, warm things up for me. That right there is a giant mug of that of coffee. I did, uh, I didn't bring my little 450 ml cup just to save a little bit of weight. Um, just kind of dual purposing my cook pot. I did bring a little bit of um, biodegradable like wilderness wash, they call it soap or something like that. So I cleaned this out real nice last night. Ah, perfect temp. Little uh, Nescafe instant coffee, pretty good. So now it's like 7.30ish, and um, I think I'm just gonna have coffee and roll. Another thing that's kinda interesting, uh, either this campsite is <clears throat> haunted, or more realistically, perhaps a furry woodland creature um, has a new nest, because my hat, my baseball cap, uh, is no longer here. I swapped into my knit hat last night, and sat my hat down, my baseball cap, and it's nowhere to be found. And it's not in my pack or anything, it was sitting here. So that is a little strange, a little bit of a bummer too, because that was one of my favorite caps. I actually got it from a viewer from the Rocky Mountain uh, Elk Foundation. So yeah, I can't quite figure that one out. But this is a nice spot, actually right back behind me here, there's a pretty cool view. Um, if you go through the trees there, it's real nice looking. So I'm just going to relax around here and then break down the tent, which should be quick and simple. Throw it in my pack. Oh, my pack, by the way, people often ask, um, you know, what my pack weight is, base weight and whatnot. I didn't do a thorough accounting for this video. Um, I did weigh it real quick before I put food and water in with like a luggage scale and it was pushing up close to 20 pounds, which for me is about double weight, but it is my heavier winter pack. Uh, that weighs around five or six maybe pounds compared to my two and a half pound uh, summer pack. And then I had all the extra clothing layers in there and stuff, which speaking of that, I don't know, it looks nice now, but they, uh, they said it might rain uh, sometime after 11. So I'd like to try to beat that. Um, and then also I got to pick my wife up from the airport tonight in Philly. That's not until midnight, so I got plenty of time for that. But... Yeah, hopefully we don't get rained on, but it is what it is. Beautiful right now though. So I'm just gonna enjoy this coffee and then break down and get back to hitting the trail. All right, all packed up. Just in time for the first droplets of rain, but I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go full rain gear yet. Um, it's nice and sunny over here where the sun came up, but over here, actually it's a little lighter now. It was darker and I think it's moving that way. Hopefully it's moving away from us. Although I suppose there's a very real chance that it's moving with us, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, we're ready to go. Double check the campsite, all clear. This is where the tent was right here. Can't even tell we were there, right? Perfect. You ready to go, Nels? All right, buddy, let's do it. Let's head back out the way we came. Oh, hey now. What's that, Nolly? You don't see it either? All right, not hunted after all. I guess I need to start hiking with uh, like a safety orange hunting hat or something. The brown uh, blends in pretty well. I don't know how it ended up over here. I was never even really over here last night, but uh, I'm still gonna say it's haunted. All right, let's go. I'll tell you what though, not having a gallon of water on my back <laughs> or a can of chili and a few other food items. 
certainly feels pretty nice. All right, so that's where we came from. View in the campsite that I just will have to do again sometime. We backtrack out here for a little bit. The White Blaze intersection. Uh, the name of the trail escapes me right now, but we'll get back there and then uh, continue this loop clockwise. There we go. So that is the, I think it's pink. Some people say purple. There's the pink blaze trail from yesterday that we came up on and the white blaze. And the name that was escaping me is German Wilson Trail. So yesterday we went up there. It's just a spur to the summit. It doesn't continue any further. So today we will go down this way and then eventually we will be brought to another intersection with the Half Moon Mountain Trail. And Nolly, what you doing? Smell something? Come on. So Nolly's walking a little slower today. That is apparent for sure. Although he's picking up the pace now, just trying to show off because the camera's on. But I'm sure he's tired. He's a good little hiking dog, but I'm sure that took it out of him yesterday. So I have a feeling both of us might be a little sore after today. I'm definitely looking forward to a cheeseburger. Denali can have a hamburger with no bun, no cheese. I gotta spend three hours driving home in the Jeep with them. So I don't think I wanna feed them cheese before that. <laughs> but anyway, pretty mild trail so far. And uh, yesterday we actually racked up like 2,000 feet or so of elevation gain. I'll have to take a look at the actual stats and pop them up. Today, it's predominantly, it's, it's almost all downhill, which will be nice. A couple up and downs as we make our way down off the ridge, but pretty much just descending for five miles or so. <sighs> cool view right over there. And uh, it's not raining on us. Feels nice. Still got the long sleeve on. Feeling pretty good because we're not really working too hard. And the temp is uh, pretty nice. Dropped a couple degrees, 50, 59 ish. So, just relax and make our way out. We left around nine o'clock from camp, so we're doing just fine on time. I guess we already racked out like a mile. Half Moon Trail, Bucktail Cutoff Trail, Trout Run Road. So, that is where the Jeep is waiting for us, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't say that. It's a much smoother trail, the occasional rocks, but nothing like yesterday. So the footing is pretty easy. And I actually just, right before that intersection, saw another campsite that looked kind of nice. Although I preferred being up on the ridge, but I went ahead and tagged that one too. So anybody else who wants to do this, yeah, definitely some nice camping options around here. Cool little area here. Now, I don't see a sign, but I know from my GPS where we are. And this should be where it splits. We want the bucktail cutoff trail, which should be if we go right, at least in our current direction. But just tagged another campsite back there, right by the water. Huge campsite opportunity. Nice low land area here. And it is, oh look, there's another fire pit right there. So this is just uh, campsite central around here. <sighs> And it looks like the blazes, they have been yellow, but looks like they're changing back to pink or purple, fuchsia, whatever you want to call it. up a couple more miles to go 
two and a half or so, maybe. All right, go ahead. Don't be dehydrated. I should probably do the same, and then we'll keep going. Where do you want to cross? Over here? A little more uphill. Nothing compared to yesterday, like I said, but a little bit. Some cool views over here, though. That ridge that we dropped down off of. Nice. All right. Lots of leaves in this area, too. Extra crunchy. Crunchy. A little bit of a different vibe that we're getting into here. These rocks that we're going by. It's actually been pretty flat for a while, but now it's starting to get this almost higher elevation kind of feel, even though we're actually at <laughs> low elevation right now. But I like it. We're within probably a mile of the car right now which is great because, well, actually, maybe it's not great. Maybe I was too aggressive with my start. It's uh, 10.55, which isn't bad timing-wise. Uh, I guess that will put me at the vehicle right around lunchtime, though, probably. So that's not bad. I haven't eaten yet today. Just had that coffee and rolled out. I think I'm still running on that, uh, <laughs> that monstrosity of uh, chili mac and cheese that I made last night. At this point, I'll probably just hold out, just do a nice fasted five and a half miles or so, and then uh, crush something flame broiled, if you know what I'm saying. But oh, here's the downhill again. So we're cranking along in the home stretch. Well, that actually felt like less than a mile, although the terrain's nice, so maybe I was going faster than I thought, but. That is the fire road right there that we're rejoining. Got some orange blazes now that we're switching over to. And I'm not gonna do the loop again. So we'll take a left here and home stretch. Well, there you go. We're back to the Jeep, Nolly. We made it. It's still there, still a one piece. I have a feeling Nolly's gonna be snoozing pretty hard pretty soon. I won't be, I got some driving to do. Stop somewhere for a little calorie replacement, but that's it, we did it. Just a little quick hit, a little taste of West Virginia. I really enjoyed it, it was nice. Um, you could totally do this as a 10 mile or 11 mile day hike, of course, but I thought that spot up there was really cool and um, just a great campsite, great views, some good food and good times with my dog. Right, Nelly? You liked it? You're just tired, but I think you liked it. There you have it. Appreciate everybody joining me on this one. Woo, but I'm pretty hungry. So until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>